Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado. I'm back with another episode of Harmonize Your Life, Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color. I'm very delighted to welcome back to our show, Dr. Anastasia Alvarado. You know from the last time that she was with us how um, much of a resource that Dr. Anastasia Alvarado is to our community. She is a child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist who has spent her, her, uh, her years, her career, serving and educating underserved populations about mental health. She was with us in um, our first episode of the podcast. Um, she comes to us very well qualified to talk to us about our subject for today. I want Dr. Anastasia Alvarado to help us because we are in the middle of a pandemic that is seemingly taking over the world. And certainly here in the U.S., um, we are just about maybe 12 days into um, where we have been asked to um, quarantine ourselves, self-quarantine. Um, now we have guidelines from CDC that started with, at one point, we were being told we could not gather in groups of more than 250. Then it was groups of uh, of a hundred, then it was groups of fifty, and now we're down to we're not we're asked to not gather in groups of more of ten or more people. Our schools are have been uh, closed now coming up on a week. Many of the schools in our school districts here in Georgia um, are um, online now. Parents are having to. Uh, quarantine themselves with their children and school uh, homeschool their children while we're in the midst of this pandemic. Colleges have closed down and um, um, many of them are not sure if they're going to reopen with um, with graduations um, pending and all um, all kinds of um, celebratory events that mark milestones for our children. Our, our youth, our teenagers, and even our adults who are attending colleges and universities around the country. And there is so much emotional uh, letdown that's happening as people have to cancel major life events. Weddings are being canceled. Birthday celebrations are being canceled. Uh, um, anniversary celebrations are being canceled. Church events and conferences are being canceled. And we're all just kind of looking like, what is going on? And so in the midst of all of this, I want to make sure that those that um, are part of this podcast community are, are uh, not only um, quarantining yourselves and paying attention to the guidelines that CDC has put out for us and our president has been coming on with daily up, uh, updates and uh, news briefings along with um, those um, in the on the White House task force team to uh, help us understand uh, what this virus is while they're still trying to find it out, find out to help us discover ways that we can care for ourselves and to flatten this virus in our society. So I asked Dr. Anastasia if she would come on and do a special podcast with me to talk about self-care in um, the midst of social, the term social distance. The term that we're using now is social distance. And so I want to know, um, I want us to know how we can practice self-care while we are practicing social distance. And so I've asked Dr. Anastasia Alvarado to come on and talk to us today. Good afternoon, Dr. Alvarado. Good afternoon. Um, uh, first to your um, podcast listeners, greetings, and to you, Dr. Tony, thank you um, for, as a pastor, but also as someone who prioritizes self-care, um, thinking about what uh, we as a community might need to be able to um, consider um, our emotional and mental health during this time period mm -hmm. when we are distancing ourselves physically um, to take care of ourselves with our physical health and well-being. So, you know, during this time when we're distancing ourselves from each other physically, um, 
you know, it, it can be um, where um, there are some heightened senses of um, tiredness, fatigue, mm. um, depression, anxiety, um, just with everything that we're getting inundated with and just the fact that we're having a new normal um, and having to um, completely transition ourselves and, and learn new terminology, like you mentioned, like social distancing, yes. and flattening the curve and, and self-quarantining and isolation and what all those things mean um, and how they're impacting us um, in our daily lives right now. So yeah. thank you for doing this. Um, and um, thank you for having me on. Um, I just kind of want to start out maybe by just kind of talking about the terminology, just in case um, people don't know or may may sometimes use words interchangeably, and, and, and it's a little bit different, um, you know, based on what we're talking about. You know, social, there's a difference between social distancing when we talk about self-quarantining, when we talk about isolation. So mm -hmm. there's technically a little bit of difference between those. So the social distancing is a terminology they're using to describe increasing physical space between people to avoid illness. So that's things like working from home mm -hmm. um, instead of going into the office, the closing of schools that you mentioned and mm -hmm. switching to online classes, maybe um, using more of our electronic devices and social media rather than doing things in person and mm -hmm. certainly canceling and postponing conferences and large meetings and getting things to the point where we're only meeting in groups of 10 or less. So that's what we're talking about as far as that social distancing is concerned is the terminology that's being used. Now, self-quarantining is a little bit different. So that's where um, where someone may have been actually exposed to okay. COVID-19, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So they have been exposed to the novel coronavirus, and we're asking for those who potentially could have been exposed to self-quarantine for up to 14 days um, because they could potentially become ill. And so we ask for that 14 day self quarantine in order to make sure that they don't contract the illness. And then you could kind of go about your usual practices. Um, and so that may mean, you know, staying at home, not having visitors, things like that, um, not sharing towels and utensils. And so that's someone who potentially has been, um, has been, um, you know, um, subjected to the illness by someone else who was positive. Okay. Um, isolation. Um, specifically is talking to those who actually are infected. So they okay. did get the test. They did test positive, okay. And we want to make sure that their illness is not spread to others outside or others even within their own household, okay. if at all possible. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of these things together, so mm -hmm. the, the practice of social distancing, the practice of self-quarantining, the practice of isolation is what is going to help us what we call flatten the curve. Okay. And so what that is, is, is we're trying to incorporate all of these protective measures so that as when a virus comes about, um, it's very easy to transmit this virus. Right now, the CDC believes that the virus is transmitted via droplet. So like if you cough and there's like, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. when we cough, the reflex is, mm -hmm. is that there's air, you know, there's not mm -hmm. just the air, but the droplets coming from your mouth or you sneeze or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. then that droplet is what is, is, um, mm -hmm. getting transmitted and that six feet of distance is what is needed in order for there not to be droplet transmission. Okay. And so in order to flatten the curve, we're asking people to change how they sanitize things, you know, so sanitize things as far as within your home and sanitizing doorknobs and things that we frequently touch or light switches mm -hmm. or washing your hands for the 20 seconds that has always been in place yes. uh -huh. and why is it you no know, hand washing well, we should have been doing new. all along right exactly this isn't new right. we're just asking you to be more mindful about mm -hmm. your practices of mm -hmm. it and doing it in the correct manner and then you know drying off your hands using that towel to touch off the faucets mm -hmm. and opening doors and things like that um and so as we are putting in those things, what we talked about as far as the social distancing in place and putting in sanitizing things and, um, and 
putting that and incorporating that into our daily lives, what it does is, is it slows down the rate of transmission so that we can decrease that sharp peak and rise that we see with this transmission. As you can see from the numbers, probably from any news outlet, Mm -hmm. that it's, it's spreading very rapidly. And the only way that we can decrease that curve down so that the spread, it's not to say the spread goes away, but the spread is is not happening as rapidly. So therefore our healthcare system Mm -hmm. is not overwhelmed and inundated with being able to take care of people who are severely physically ill. So it doesn't affect everybody in the same way. Um, You know, COVID-19, some may be asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. Some may have very mild symptoms, such as just a mild cough Mm -hmm. or fever, or they might just have just the fever. Um, And so, um, but then there are those who are struggling and having significant shortness of breath, which is then affecting, particularly if they have other illnesses that they may be dealing with, okay. and it's affecting their capacity to be able to breathe uh, appropriately, or it could be affecting their cardiac function. Mm-hmm. And so our healthcare system is not prepared to handle the amount of cases if we don't incorporate these new practices. Okay. We are already seeing healthcare systems talking about they don't have enough masks mm-hmm. and protective, what we call personal protective equipment. Mm-hmm. So things that help keep those people who have to go to work, which is our healthcare providers for one, mm-hmm. um, and who are on the front line seeing people who are sick, um, they don't have enough protective, personal protective equipment to keep them safe. Wow. So they're having to reuse masks at hospitals, which of course is not great clinical right, practice, right. but they're mm-hmm. having to reuse masks or they're running out of masks. People are using things like um, masks that painters might use within their home just to be able to have something so that they're guarded or they're protected. They don't have enough gowns. Um, we're concerned about not having enough ventilators in, the, in our ICUs if people do get severely physically ill. Mm-hmm. Um, so the demand, if people do not pay attention and heed the precautionary and preventative measures that we're trying to be put in place, it's going to overwhelm. And then what happens when our healthcare workers are too sick to take care of us? Why, why, why? you know, so, so we're putting them in will break down. The whole mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. is, it, it's, it's showing us right now how ill equipped and ill prepared our system really is. And okay. it's, it's, we're already there where um, even just this morning, the governor in New York was talking about they're searching globally for personal protective equipment because they don't have enough. Wow. Um, and so my colleagues who are on the front lines in urgent care and emergency rooms um, are constantly talking about that, where even the CDC put out the newest uh, recommendation, which is if you've run out of masks, just use a bandana. I mean, wow. Wow. We're, we're there. We're, wow. we're there where we're, we don't, we don't have everything that we need. Um, and so, yes, it, it's at this time period, I know that there's a lot of disappointments that people have. I know that being in these, in this type of setting and mm-hmm. restricting how late we can be out or not mm-hmm. being able to sit down in a restaurant with our family and mm-hmm. friends mm-hmm. is is not what we would want. Our graduations being canceled, canceled. This is not what we want. Yeah. But the other end of that is is putting healthcare workers at risk, putting other Americans at risk for contracting the disease and getting seriously mm-hmm. ill, or even you mm-hmm. know we know we see the death toll as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we do have to take it seriously and and consider that yes, this is temporary and we can be kind of temporarily inconvenient to consider the rest of humanity okay, and okay. not be maybe so, so considering like, Oh, well, this has just changed up my whole entire day. We get that. We understand right, it. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think the best example that I might be able to give to someone is, is, is people talking about being upset with the grocery store shelves and looking at toilet mm-hmm, paper mm-hmm. and you can't find toilet paper. You can't find meat. <laughs> you can't find meat right now. You cannot find toilet paper. people are panic shopping. Because people are panic shopping. Now imagine what happens if that happens to our hospital. Oh my God. So mm-hmm. imagine you go to, you're going to five mm-hmm. or six different hospitals and, and, and you, and, and a, a healthcare worker, a physician, a nurse practitioner, a wow. PA, a nurse wow. is having to decide for you. Um, so we got, you know, 
10 respirators, but we've got 20 people who need to be on respirators. So somebody's not going to get a respirator, right? And it could who? be you or your loved one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. So it's dire. It's very dire. Wow. It is. And it's it very is. sobering to, to think, put it in those terms. Dr. Right. Anastasia, thank you so much for helping us to understand a little bit better the, the seriousness of where we are and uh, what we need to do in caring not only for ourselves, but caring for our neighbor. Right. Right. So let me ask you this, though. So we're in, we're there. I heard you say we're there. We're here. This is where we are. So while we're here, what can we do? to maintain our own, you know, physical health, emotional health mainly while we're here. Because I hear people saying things like, you know, I'm bored or, you know, I don't like being in, I'm an extrovert. And now, you know, this is hard on SC, you know, people saying things on social media, this is hard for extroverts. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm an extrovert that I'm an introvert that has to live an extroverted life, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I'm people think that I'm an extrovert, but I'm really I, I'm loving being at home. I'm telling you, I could stay home <laughs> all day, never turn on the television, just sit in silence. I love it. I love it. I got up this morning. It was quiet. I had my quiet time. I was sitting and watching. It's, it was interesting because it started out with, with like a little rainy outside. And, and then I sat. And as I'm sitting there, I'm literally watching the rain dry up and the sun starts to pierce through the uh, clouds and pierce through the trees in my backyard. And I'm sitting there at my breakfast looking. I'm like, life is good. Life is good. You know? And so, right. um, yeah, and, and yes, I've had some disappointments. I've had several um, events that I was supposed to speak for have canceled in the last couple of weeks because of necessity. And you know, those things are a little disappointing. And so, yeah. um, um, uh, and I'm a big girl about it, but still, it still doesn't take yeah. away the disappointment. Right. It still doesn't take away that feeling of being disappointed. Yeah. And it's okay not to be okay. Right. Exactly. It is okay, it's okay not, not, not to, to be okay. okay. Exactly. Right. And so, um, yeah. So talk yeah. to us about that. Some of the emotional letdown. You know, our, right. our your niece, my daughter, is a student at Spelman. And right. uh, Spelman College had to close down like mo all colleges. And, um, um, you know, la just earlier this week, I was talking to her and um, I asked her, I said, how are you with all this? Where are you with this? Emotionally, where, where are you? And I told her, tell me how you really feel. And she began to explain to me some of her emotions behind. Um, she understands, first of all, why we have the school had to close and why she had to leave campus and all of that. But it's still it's still disappointing. She's got her junior right. recital coming up. Now she's got to do it online. And she's like, you know, how am I going to get my recital done? I'm a performance major. How do I do, right. you know, how do performance majors do online work? So, I mean, right. she's really trying to figure this out. She's sad for her her Spelman sisters. Some of them, uh, several of her uh, sisters in the Glee Club are seniors uh, scheduled to graduate. There are so many uh, rituals and things that they go through at the end of their journey at Spelman. Um, and so they're not, they're not going to either, they're not going to be able to do these things at all, or they or certainly they're going to be postponed and possibly canceled altogether. And so, yeah, that emotional letdown, yeah. what do we do Absolutely. with it? So, I mean, the first thing that you mentioned was, I mean, really taking the, the right steps. So the first thing is just give yourself a minute, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, we've only been in this um, restricted type of, I guess, um, setting as far as our environment is concerned for um, for probably the past week, um, for some maybe week and a half, two weeks. And so give yourself a minute to try to figure out um what are next steps, right? Okay. Because a lot of times I think people's fear, um, their panic, mm -hmm. their, mm -hmm. their, these emotions come because we're, uh, we want to be proactive mm -hmm. um, and being completely passive is just kind of foreign to us. So the first thing is kind of giving yourself a minute and trying to wrap your head around that, maybe get a trusted family member or mm -hmm. friend or coworker mm -hmm. to help you figure out what are next steps mm -hmm. in the different areas of your life that mm -hmm. are going to be impacted as mm -hmm. far as 
finances, work-related stuff, school-related stuff, mm. child care, entertainment. Okay. Help them figure out how to wrap my head around this. And like, I may be thinking certain things, but somebody else, maybe a trusted, that trusted person might be able to help me see this differently okay. so that I can start maybe putting some steps in place and it makes me feel better that I'm able to wrap my my head around this okay um you know a little bit better and so I've gotten some stuff I can do even though I know there's stuff I can't do right right, right and in right. the process of that acknowledging the disappointment like mm-hmm. we talked about just like you did with your daughter acknowledging the fact that this is hard mm-hmm. missing events missing plays or spring breaks or proms mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. graduations mm-hmm. um these are huge milestone events mm-hmm. and it's it's like we said, it's okay to, to not be okay. And to say, I'm disappointed that Mm -hmm. I won't get to do this Mm -hmm. and not feel like we have to push them or rush them through Mm -hmm. that process of jumping to feeling better. Exactly. I like that. And so when you say, I'm writing down what you're saying. So number one, you said, Mm -hmm. give yourself a minute. Mm -hmm. And that's key to me because a lot of times we don't know how to sit in the moment. We don't know how to just experience what we're experiencing in the moment. And we want to rush on to the next thing. And we certainly want to resolve where we are because we don't like this, this in between place. (laughs) So it's like, Oh, let's hurry up, you know, and resolve this. And so I love that idea of of giving yourself a minute. We haven't been in this that long. So let's just give ourselves a minute to, to experience what we're experiencing and then acknowledging the disappointment. Okay. So right, give yourself right. a minute, acknowledge the disappointment. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, and so then once, once you've taken those steps and you feel like I can maybe go on to a, to, to, okay, I've, I know that this is where I am. And it doesn't mean that those, those moments of, you know, emotional moments won't pop back up. Mm-hmm. They will. Mm-hmm. Um, when something else has to be canceled or something okay. else gets missed. So, you know, when those times come, acknowledge it during those moments and okay. when, when we are having to transition and change. Mm-hmm. But then, like I said, work on um, figuring out ways to um, to um, address those things that have changed and have to change based on where we are right now. Okay. So figuring out what's going to work for you as far as um, a schedule um, with what your day looks like uh-huh. and um, figuring out more of a, a, a new routine for yourself, mm-hmm. um, you know, as far as that's concerned. And mm-hmm. part of that routine should be, um, as far as moving forward, is giving yourself every day to maybe talk with someone, like, okay. you know, to con- to connect with someone and just to, to talk about that. And it's not to necessarily wallow in it, mm-hmm. but to at least give myself some time every day to kind of, you know, hey, I, I need to to process through this mm-hmm. and give myself that time every day to think about that mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. as we are moving forward. And that could be journaling, mm-hmm. right? Writing mm-hmm. a letter or something or, mm-hmm. or just talking through. So mm-hmm. every day maybe putting in through something like this is, this is different, but mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. let that be a part of the things that we're doing proactively as far as mm-hmm. planning and incorporating um, the new normal, as we're saying, that okay. we have. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, as far as, um, you know, things that we can can do to kind of ease, um, you know, sometimes the loneliness that may come up or mm-hmm. the feeling so isolated from mm-hmm. everyone else, mm-hmm. um, you know, I highly recommend making sure that, you know, for um, those who are with their family um, and who are in physical, more physical distancing with their family Mm -hmm. to make sure that as part of your schedule every day, that this is a great time to do family activities. A lot Mm -hmm. of times because of our day to day and we have work and outside activities, community service things, um, we don't spend a lot of time with our families. This is a great time to reconnect with our family Mm -hmm. and to schedule things like maybe schedule a game night or schedule Mm -hmm. an activity um, or, you know, one of the things that you could do as a family is go back through and revisit old photos and memories, right? Mm, right. Wow, so pull out, 
pull out your photo collection, pull mm. up family videos, go back through and 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 mm. look at some of the things that you don't give yourself time to do right on a normal right, on right. a normal day to day basis because we don't have time to do it, but now we do. Wow, that's good. Um, what would you say yeah. to someone who may be single or at home right, alone? Right. What how yes. how would they connect with family and friends during this time? Right. And so those who may be single or um or individual, you can still connect socially and, and you notice me using the term physical distance a mm-hmm. lot rather than social distance because I'm trying to reframe and restructure that because even just the terminology that we use with social distancing, it mm-hmm. makes it feel like I have to distance myself from people socially. But socializing with someone doesn't have to be being physically in their presence. Okay, exactly. Right? Uh-huh. So, I mean, we're in the age of technology yes. where we can still socially connect with individuals. So we have FaceTime and we have Zoom and we have Skype and, and things like that. Yes. And so you can still schedule time um, during your daily schedule okay. to connect with someone via um, video chatting or just picking up the phone and calling them um, to be able to help. I mean, you could convert your book club over to a, a social media book club. Right, Zoom, right, 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 right. Or there's a lot of people doing, you know, if they're, you know, might be a drink or something, they do happy hours actually on social media now. Right, so they're wow. like, I know a, a, a colleague of mine, she said, I've had a very long day of work. She's an urgent care physician. So she's one of the frontline people. And she's like, after after my day, my line sisters and I, um, in her sorority, she's like, we're going to actually doing a, a, a happy hour. And she's like, I don't connect with my line sisters hardly ever. But wow. she's more intentional. They're being more intentional about that. Wow. Um, and so they're doing that, just checking in with each other and, mm-hmm. and seeing how each other's days are going. Mm-hmm. So just because you might live alone doesn't mean that you have to be disconnected. Wow, that's so funny because this morning I was thinking um, – maybe of, of, uh, I was thinking about a couple of my girlfriends and I was like, you know, I wonder if we could do us like a little, um, Skype girlfriend, uh, hangout. Let's do a little right. Google hangout uh, Google with hangout just our girlfriends. Uh, yeah. Right. And you guys do a coffee hour. You yeah, do a yeah. tea hour. Yeah. Um, everybody has their tea or whatever and we're just kicking back and yeah. we're, Connecting and you know, that's what the, ki- the young people call it, a kickback. So we can have exactly. us a kickback via <laughs> Google Hangout. Good. Right. I love that. Right. Okay. Excellent. Right. So we can connect, um, use technology um, to our advantage during this time. Yes. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, and then another one. So um, another social me- using social media to do, and so still taking care of yourself physically. So not just thinking about Mm COVID-19, but also talking about just your overall physical health and still working out as you, as I know, you are certainly big on fitness and working out. (laughs) So you could, for for some who aren't allergy prone, such as myself, and and allergies and pollens are out there. So going outside and doing physical stuff and getting into nature isn't always the best for me right now because they might look at me some kind of way if I'm outside <laughs> hacking and coughing. Um, Put a mask <laughs> on, Stacy. Put a mask <laughs> on, Dr. Stacy. Put a mask but, on. I saw but, people walking around Stone Mountain yesterday right. with a mask on. Right. So you can go outside and yes. enjoy, look, enjoy nature. Exactly. Enjoy the, mm-hmm. the beauty of nature that God has, has yes. out there yes. that we, we, again, overlook a lot of times. So go out to the mountain to the park yes. um, and yes. get your physical activity that way. Exactly. Or I saw a friend of mine, she went to the lake with her family. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they all live together, but they went to the lake. She said there was nobody out there. Right. So they all went out to the lake and mm-hmm. still practicing social distancing out the lake. Mm-hmm. If you're one who's um, still wants to, you like being in a class, one of the therapists at my office, they did their Zumba class on Zoom. Wow. Um, and so a lot of people are, are transitioning even fitness classes and workout yeah. classes and, um, to what platforms a, like that. You know, Dr. Uh, you know, um, Tasha, Tasha Lewis mm-hmm. uh, from Tata's Fitness Camp. She's going to be on our podcast this week. And okay. I noticed that she um, she's doing um, online uh, fitness boot camp, her fitness camp. They're doing their, See? she's turned, I mean, she's turned it into, right. um, an online platform and it's working and, right. I mean, you know, and, and you're right. And we need to, we need to take advantage of technology. We need to get outdoors. Um, we need, I, I just this week, I went and renewed my membership or, or got me another parking pass for stone mountain park. You know, we have to buy the little decal to get, so you don't have, you can pay every time, okay. but it's cheaper to buy the, 
decal to put on your car, the little sticker to put on your car. And it's, it lasts for a whole year. So, you okay. know, when I pulled up and I was like, how much is the, um, you know, it's gone up just a little bit. So um, it was $40 for one car, $65 for two cars. So I said, oh, my goodness, give me two. So I put one on my car. I put one on Bishop's car. And so that way we can go to the mountain. And I, I that was one of my goals for 2020 anyway. So, okay. you know, because I'm used to going to the gym. But I told my trainer this week, I need to get outdoors. It's, you know, I like being outdoors, right. especially in the spring and the fall, summer. I like being outside. And so, um, yeah. And so I saw people right. walking. And we were practicing social distance right. or it's physical walking, distance bike riding is riding still, their bikes yeah. exactly they weren't walking and holding hands or anything but people were keeping that six foot rule and and things of that nature but it was good and as a matter of fact um is it is it dr deborah i'm, I'm trying to think of her name is it dr burks that um that's on the white house for um task force committee that's been giving the helping to give the updates um she said that you know we need to in, go outside. Even Governor Cuomo, I'm listening to him quite a bit. And um, he's talking about, in, well, you know, I don't know what New York is doing today. I know they're on, I think he's enforced a, um, a quarantine where they can't go out outside mm -hmm. of their house. But before that, he was encouraging them to ride their bikes and go to the park and things of that nature. And so um, if we're allowed to do those things, if we're allowed to go outside, I encourage people to do so. If it, if it's nothing but sit on your back porch, you know, right? I, like this morning, I was I was sitting there watching my watching the deer run through my backyard, right. and so I mean, it's just the simple things that are around us every day that we don't take advantage of, and I really think that this pandemic, this um, this uh, quarantine that we're on, this self quarantine. It's it's really kind of a gift from God in in a lot of ways because it is forcing us to slow down. It is forcing us to slow down. I think it's 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 forcing us to slow down. It's also forcing us to self reflect, mm -hmm. and it's also giving us the opportunity to maybe express a little bit of gratitude and appreciation mm -hmm. for things that we have taken for granted. Which kind of brings me on to another thing that people can do, which is, um, is showing, doing some virtual acts or just some acts of kindness during mm -hmm. this time period. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, for instance, you know, remote acts of kindness. So for instance, um, um, like I've seen a lot of people um, in particular um, talking about like maybe you know, they posted on social media, like my neighbor dropped off food or something for me at my house on my porch or whatever, mm -hmm. or, um, there have been, um, different sewing clubs across the country who are actually sewing masks, wow. um, for the healthcare providers. Um, one of the fashion designers in New York, Christian Serrano is converting his entire, um, sewing team over into just mm. making masks for the, for the healthcare providers wow. in the state of New York. Right. So we can, Feel, I mean, and how good does that make us feel, yes, right? Yes, so that we're yes. not isolated. It reminds us again, I'm not in isolation no. and I can still help mm -hmm. and have a greater sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, you probably received the same email that I did from our sorority, yes. um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, mm -hmm. talking about the students. Yes, um, in and, our Atlanta and, yeah, um, HBCUs and, and, mm -hmm. and, and our HBCUs. Yes. And, you know, the college students, um, you know, down in our Atlanta University Center, um, mm -hmm. our HBCUs mm -hmm. down there, you know, they're having to go back this coming week, pack up all of their belongings yes. and head back home. Well, for many of them, maybe financially strapped or distressed anyway. And mm -hmm. so they've called out to, to us to say, hey, can you contribute? you know, $20 here or $40 here right, right. to help with paying for boxes or yes, packing equipment yes. for them to be able to pack up their stuff and it not be financially um, crippling to them to be able to do so. So that's an act of kindness, right? Wow, so wow. reaching out to maybe your local college and, mm -hmm. a, or university and saying, hey, do you all have... Um, you know, uh, an office of, uh, you know, financial support or whatever to help students with something like that stuff that we don't even think about, mm -hmm. but that might be very difficult for mm -hmm. people right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so we need to um, consider those things wow. um, in, in donating to organizations yes. or being yes. able to help organizations yes. during that time. That also promotes a sense of community and wow. social organizations. Wow. Right? Well, Dr. Anastasia, you have really helped us. I want to repeat. I wrote down six things that you said. Okay. You said, um, give yourself a minute. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge the disappointment from, from things that are having to shut down and cancel. Yes. Um, figure out what will work for you in this new normal and this new routine. Figure out what will work. Adjust. Find out what you can do now. You may not be able to do what you used to do, but you can do something. Um, you talked about um, spending time with um, 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 journaling and writing letters to ourselves and maybe even to other to family members. You said spend time with family, game nights, revisit old, um, I love this idea, revisit old pictures. Now, you know, I, I love pictures, so I'm going to make my kids sit down and we, my young adults <laughs> sit down and we're going over all their baby pictures, okay? And uh, But l- reviewing old memories and old family movies, that would be excellent. Using technology to connect with our family and friends. Number five, you said get physical um, walking, going outdoors, and if you can't do outdoors, there are virtual things, Zumba classes and things that you can be a part of. Um, um, you talked about um, doing acts of kindness during yes. this season, and certainly we can do those acts of kindness. I see people um, going by and dropping off gifts to their, to their classmates or friends or families, and certainly you can donate online to different things. And I want to add one other thing. Um, um, that as we close out this is also a good time to get some things done around your house now you know me i'm a little ocd and i love all this wiping and cleaning up we've been doing right um and um and so like i got a room cleaned in my house that i've been meaning to clean all year i mean since last year been walking by it and kept saying i'm not gonna i'm gonna get to it i'm gonna get to it but because i've been in the house and 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 quarantined i I actually finished this this room. It looks so good. Bishop was out of town. When he came back, he didn't even recognize the room. And I was like, don't you see what I did? Look at this. I mean, I was so proud of myself. I got that room done. And I mean, so it may be a good time to get some things done right. around to your finish, house. Unfinished projects. Unfinished Absolutely. projects. Um, get um, do some things. The census is out. Go online and finish the census. The census, right. the 2020 census. There are things that you could be doing. There are applications that you could be filling out during this time. You might have a book that you that you can be writing uh, on, a paper that you need to finish, college student. Um, you you there there there's a there's a, a a business plan that you might need to write. Things that you have been saying that you're going to do for a while. This will be a great time to get it done. And there's nothing that lifts our spirit like finishing something that, that we need to finish, a project or, or, or something that's been looming or, or uh, uh, that we've been procrastinating in getting done. So thank you, right. thank you, and thank you. Just one more quick tip, Dr. Tony, yes, just, yes. just because I'm a psychiatrist, I'm always going to tell people, if you notice that things are are still very overwhelming for you, and you are struggling with depression or anxiety or anything like that, please seek help. By all um, means, just please because, say that. Say that please again. seek help. Mm-hmm. Um, please reach out, uh, look for a therapist, a psychologist or psychiatrist in your area um, and seek help. Um, contact your insurance provider to find um, someone. If you, know, if, if you have insurance, if you don't have insurance, you can still seek a mental health provider. Um, I work in a community mental health center where we see people who are uninsured um, as well. So you can always access help if things are too much for you. Mm. And you know, just talking to a family member or friend or a pastor is, or they recommend that, you, hey, this is more than, than what we are going to be able to deal with in this type of setting. Mm-hmm. It is okay to seek help yes. and to get the help that you need. And they can, guess what? They can see you from home too, because we're very, very quickly transitioning as m- many people as we possibly can over to what we call telemedicine. So you don't even have to leave your home if you wow. don't, if you, you don't have to, wow. you're immunocompromised or maybe you're sick or whatever have you. Um, we're trying to do as much of that as we possibly can. So you don't have to leave your home just to talk to your therapist. 
You wow. can do that over the, your computer or over your phone. Um, they've lifted all these restrictions off of us and being able to communicate with our patients wow. in that way, FaceTime, Skype, and all of that. So all of those restrictions have been lifted. A lot of the HIPAA stuff has been lifted so that we can still connect with people and make sure that they get the help that, that they need. Um, so yes, I'm still in the office, still doing what needs to wow. be done to make sure that my patients are still being seen and cared for and they know we're here. Wow. Okay? Wow. Whew, thank you so right. much, Dr. Anastasia. I'm telling you, these these eight things are so important. I just want to just, I'm going to give the eight points real quick as I close out. Give okay. yourself a minute. Acknowledge the disappointment. Figure out what will work for you in this new normal or new routine. Spend time with family and friends. Use technology as uh, during this time to connect with family and friends. So you're limiting, limiting feelings of isolation and aloneness. Five, get physical, walking, biking, doing um, uh, virtual exercise groups and classes. Um, do acts of kindness virtually, um, doing things for people in your community, donating to charities during this time. Get some things done around your house, projects and things that have been looming and things that you've been meaning to finish. And last but certainly not least, get some help. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling like you need to talk to someone, get some help. Thank you so much, Dr. Anastasia Alvarado, for coming on and doing this podcast uh, conversation with me on today. Listen, beloved, take care of yourselves. While stay safe. Let's encourage one another. Let's reach out to one another. Check on one another during this season. Let's do self-care while we practice social or, as Dr. Anastasia has helped us reframe it, physical distance. Take care.